Hi, everybody. I'm Daniel Robson from IGN Japan, and I'm joined by Danny Ku, director of production at Marvel Games. Hi, Danny. Hi. How are you doing? Very, very good, man. It's really good to see you. It's been a long time. Yeah, it's the、uh, Daniel and Danny show again. <laughs> That's right. Too many, too many fans、right. here. Sorry for、yes. confusing everybody. <laughs> All right. Um, Danny, we first met at a game event、uh, in Malaysia,、uh, which I believe is where you're from originally. Is that right? Yeah, I was born in Malaysia. I believe we met in 2019.、Uh, That's right. It's part of part of the Malaysia、uh, game conference,、uh, end of the year, right? Yes. Yeah, and it's been a while since we've been able to travel anywhere, so it's very nice to be able to connect with you like <laughs> this over over video.、Um, I think、um, so. We're going to talk today about、uh, Marvel games and how you guys work with different developers to. Get your characters and your stories into all kinds of games across all kinds of platforms.、Um, you guys are doing a pretty incredible job of getting,、oh, thank you. you know, not only getting games onto all these platforms, but consistently getting good games onto these platforms, which is a whole other conversation.、Um, so, I'd like to ask, ask you all about that. First of all, let's start by、um, just hearing a little bit about yourself, your background. How did you end up at Marvel Games?、Uh, so, yeah, hi again for anyone who didn't know. I'm Danny Ku.、Um, I was、uh, born in Malaysia. Uh, I was born and raised there, and I went to、uh, University of California Irvine to study、uh, computer science and computer engineering, and actually have a minor in、uh, missile defense. <laughs>、uh, yes,、wow. uh, at, at a very young age, I always wanted to make、uh, game content.、Uh, you know, I work、uh, summer jobs only to spend my entire wages on video games, and my dad would be like. Why do you spend all your money on video games? And now he realized that、uh, because、uh, you know I started at、uh, Sierra Entertainment as a QA tester, move my way all the way up,、uh, build my、uh, portfolio and resume. You know,、um, then I work at Activision, and then I have a stint in、uh, at Disney, and finally now、uh, you know I work at Marvel Games.、Uh, that's how I got started.、Uh, Five years ago, actually, at Marvel Games,、um, mm. you know, my role as a, a director of, of a product development is to oversee、uh, the, our Asia portfolio and also our games portfolio、uh, coming out from,、uh, especially coming out from Asian、uh, developers,、mm. and you know, grow the Marvel brand、uh, in Asia.、Uh, it's quite quite popular Marvel brand.、Um, you know, I also、uh, thankfully speak, you know. Uh, Mandarin, Cantonese, you know, Malay. So I'm pretty fluent uh, in uh, having conversation with、uh, developers at a local level,、mm -hmm. and also try to pick up, you know, a little Japanese, Korean.、Uh, <laughs> my my son goes to、uh, Korean school. I have to do some of his homework, so I learn <laughs> at the same time, which is cool. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, and、um, obviously, you know, Marvel Games as an entity has、uh, only existed. For a short time, but、uh, there have been Marvel games for a long time. I mean, you know, even when I was a kid,、um, there were you know X Men games on the Mega Drive and whatever. There were, there were tons and tons of, of Marvel games everywhere.、Um, what exactly is the Marvel Games team now? Why was the team formed? What do you do?、Uh, can you tell us a little bit about more,、uh, a little more about Marvel Games? So we are at Marvel Games. We're all Marvel fans.、Uh, kind of think of us like you know, Avengers Assemble. So uh, this uh, our uh, business unit leader、uh, Jay Ong, he, when he started at Marvel, he took a look at the market and took a look at the company, and he formed what we call a Marvel 2.0. Basically, we、uh, used to do you know whenever a Marvel movie comes in,、uh, you get your Marvel <laughs> movie game that is relevant to、uh, the particular Marvel、uh, movie, and.、Um, And it feels like、uh, it's kind of redundant because you go watch a movie, you get the same content、uh, in the video games, you experience the same thing. And also, if you haven't watched the movie, it's a spoiler for you as well、uh, on the on the games. So it, that got him thinking. It's like, hey, you know, if we're able to produce our own comics, our own、uh, television show and movies, we should be able to produce our own games. So he assembled a, a team of、uh, Marvel fans, if you will,、uh, with all kind of diversity background. You know,、um, you know,、uh, my teammates come from like various、uh, industry,、um, but all of them are gamers and they work at other、uh, game companies before. 
So basically, Avengers Assemble, we formed this Marvel Games team. And, you know, we partner with fantastic uh, developers that are expert in their relative genre and craft our own story and craft our own game with them and produce uh, uh, hits after hits. Uh, you know, that's what you see today uh, for Marvel Games. Uh, mm. Um, I mean, it's not like you guys are directly developing the games yourselves. You're working with all kinds of partner um, publishers and developers. Um, I was looking, uh, you know, because as I say, there were Marvel related games before Marvel Games was formed, but I was just looking at your official site. And I mean, there's a, the list of games is pretty impressive. Uh, everybody already, of course, knows Avengers and um, Spider-Man uh, and Miles Morales series on PlayStation. Um, we've had a, a Marvel huge tie up in Fortnite. Um, there are all kinds of games on mobile, Future Revolution, Marvel Super War. Um, there's, you know, Lego games, there's Ultimate Alliance, there's Strike Force, there's Puzzle Quest, there's the Telltale games, uh, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. There's so many um, different games coming out on all kinds of different platforms. So um, I'd love to, uh, you know, drill down a little bit on into some of those. Um, let's start with um, uh, Marvel Future Revolution. Um, this is obviously a, a, mov a, a mobile game um, being made together with Netmarble in uh, Korea. And um, I'm very curious to know um, more about um, where mobile as a platform fits in for you guys. Obviously, with you, especially being focused on Asia, mobile is a huge market in Asia, but growing in, in the West as well. Um, how do you guys see mobile? How does that fit in with other platforms and with Marvel Future Revolution in particular? Why did you go that route? So as you pointed out, we have an incredible diverse portfolio. And we also, uh, you know, we are, the reason we have so many of this and, and bear in mind, this happened the last five years, all the titles you see on the website right now. Um, this is how we expand the awareness of a Marvel content to, you know, however fans choose to engage, right? They, they, they have cell phones, they have console, they have VR, <laughs> they, they have the console of the choice. It, you know, so we want to be there to, to serve up Marvel content to all our fans, uh, however they choose to be. Um, in terms of mobile, um, it, it's very important to us. Um, it, it's a it's a huge market, as you pointed out, especially in Asia. Um, you know, they their, their primary gaming device is uh, on the phone, mm -hmm. and then uh, think of it. Uh, think of us like a creative uh, extension arm of each of these uh, Asian developers or, or Western developers um, uh, when they develop game. Um, we are embedded with them in, uh, you know, creative choices of, uh, you know, storytelling, you know, uh, the character art style. We have a, you know, we have an incredible creative team in, in Marvel games that work with them on that. And, you know, also we, we wear several hats, you know, in terms of uh, product development, uh, you know, marketing, branding. We work with our developers on that uh, day to day. Uh, mm. uh, you know, especially in, in the climate right now, um, you know, it's especially important that we are able to have constant communication. And, you know, and we're talking right now in Zoom and Zoom is a favorite too um, for, <laughs> you know, for us to talk to all the developers. Um, so going back to Marvel Future Re Revolution, uh, it's, a, it's a very, very ambitious game. We did our first title with uh, Netmarble from South Korea uh, called Marvel Future Fight. And this is uh, our second title with them. Uh, you know, we trust each other so much um, you know, we know how each other work and, you know, why not do a second title? And, mm. and we announced this title back in the uh, last year at PAX East and you know, just right before everybody got shut down on quarantine. That, that, <laughs> uh, was, la that was the last know, physical show I, I got to go to. Yeah, that's a, it feels yeah, like a lifetime ago. <laughs> I, know, I know, I know. It was a bummer. Uh, but hey, we, we, we work with them and, and recently we are amping up uh, on, on telling people what the game is all about and we have from Monday to Friday daily, we're showing new assets to, to show off on social media um, to, to get the excitement uh, going, right? So for Future Revolution, uh, it's different. You, you know, traditionally how you view a mobile phone title, like we want this to be like a, a triple A game on, on the mobile phone. It's done in Unreal Engine. Um, it's a large scale triple A open world action RPG and, mm. you know, and a lot of people com compare this with uh, various uh, competitors that, like, yeah, fair game is a, you know, in Asia is known as MMO. <laughs> but, uh, you know, 
at the root, uh, it, it's what uh, Netmarble do, do best is action RPG. And with the open world and players can have, you know, their single player campaign with PvE content or, you know, multiplayer content like PvP, you know. Um, the other exciting aspect that uh, we excited to introduce to the world is, uh, you know, in this game, there are millions of costume combination per character. So we have announced eight playable characters. <laughs> there are tons of costume choices you can do and combination. And this is going to be one of the biggest game we have offered this year. Is and, that actually, you know, actually millions of combinations per character? I'm not going to give you the exact number. It's in the triple digit millions. Wow, OK. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you know, uh, with mobile title, uh, you can uh, also have a daily touch point with fans. That means like whenever we have a you know comic book event or a movie or a Disney Plus you know event, you know across all our mobile games, we can support that as well and bring in content as an event, if you will. Cool. That's I mean that's yeah that, that that's a no small undertaking. Um, I think um. I have more questions regarding this, but first of all, I, th I think you have uh, a clip uh, to, to share with us. Is that right? Yes. Uh, you know, uh, me and Emma have decided to bring this exciting clip, uh, you know, sneak peek uh, for the audience here, and I hope you enjoy it. Here you go. Here we go. Uh, Marvel Future Revolution. Please check it out. Thanks very much for sharing that uh, with us today. Um, so as I was saying before, you know, I'm interested to know more about uh, exactly how it is that you guys work with um, different uh, developers, different platforms to get your games onto those, you know, get the right kind of characters, the right kind of stories into the right kind of games on the right kind of platforms. Because, you know, it's really, it's a lot. I mean, talking about um, Future Evolution, where you have this massive uh, open world RPG, there's a lot of content in that one game, but then you've also got all the other games as well. Um, something like, um, you know, Avengers on, on multiple platforms, for example. Um, then you have, uh, you know, each, each platform has its own game that's sort of suited to that platform. So in terms of picking characters, picking stories, picking locations from the Marvel Universe, how do you decide um, what content goes into what games, which partners to work with for those games, and um, keeping everything consistent? In, a, in terms of quality, in terms of law? Yeah, think of our team like uh, programmers uh, in a network show. Uh, you know, we know what the upcoming uh, events uh, way in the future uh, from different line of business uh, at Marvel. And we, we, we know what the characters are, what the locations are. And also we work with the developers, what they are passionate about, right? If we are making, a, uh, for example, Avengers game, or Marvel Super War. It's like, hey, who who are your favorite characters that you want to tell the story about? Then from there, you know, we work together to kind of determine the character rosters, and you know, which which is for launch and which one is for like continuation of the story, um, to to kind of evenly pace it out. Depends on the games as well. Um, we also have to ensure all the characters are well represented in in terms of like diversity. Uh, you know, how how would they look when you put them all together? Um, you know, and in terms of uh, different families of characters, you know, it's like if this is an Avengers game, sure, we want Avengers uh, in in the game. But if this is like a general Marvel Universe games, right, we would like uh, you know different uh, character representation, like you know from the Guardians, from Avengers, from Fantastic Four, uh, you know from X Men. Like we have so many families of uh, representation in in the game. 
-hmm. then also we have to match the characters with the skills uh, that the uh, creators and, and game developers wanted uh, for their gameplay purposes, right? It's like, hey, give me a tank. So we're like, okay, we have a lot of tank looking character or a fighter looking character, but what do you really want? Like, so we drill down to like a oh, sword base, spear base, you know, magical base tank. It's like, what is a magical base tank, right? It's like, hey, can Doctor Strange be a tank? Sure, if you have a giant shield in front of him at all time, like that kind of creativity, we work with them all the time. And, you know, Super War has so many of this type of uh, skill based requirement for characters. And it's been very, very interesting to work with them, how to interpret our characters and match it with the skills they want for their mobile title. I mean, I would guess probably part of your job also is with all these, all these games going on at once, making sure that each game is sufficiently you know, different and that the timing is different, that they're not stepping on each other's toes and that you don't see you know, two games that are really similar coming out at the same time. Is that something? Yeah, we, yeah. Our team have to do that, uh, especially our business team. They they look at the portfolio. We plan out ahead. We don't. We really don't like similar games that comes and collide to each other. And then we also want to space them out. So you will never find us launching two games on the same day. Uh, mm -hmm. That kind of stuff. And 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 it, it's been working well for the last five years. And of course in the game development, things changes all the time, you know, due to whatever circumstances, it's game development. Um, and then we have to, just like any network programming TV show, like we have to <laughs> reprogram everybody's, uh, you know, timeline and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that has been a very interesting, but very rewarding when it's, very, when it's done right. Sure, 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 sure. I mean, it's, it's something that, you know, not only with games, but Marvel has become very strong at across all of its uh, different outlets you know with movies as well and, and even uh, comics um, exactly. having, having yeah. compete not competing but you know complementary storylines going on across different yeah areas. i would say it's a very complementary uh relationship um so i believe uh, you, you mentioned uh, marvel super war just now um which is uh, a game uh, made together with netease games on uh, mobile and um i believe you have an exclusive clip for us to to see right now um uh, would you like to tell us a little bit about that Yes, uh, in the interest of uh, continuing uh, increased representation in the Asia uh, region, uh, today we want to show you for the first time ever uh, Wave's debut uh, in Marvel Super War. Awesome. Let's check out the video. All right. Look what the tide brought in. Me. I don't always do what I'm told. I do what's right. That was a, a cool clip. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, and, you're welcome. Uh, Danny, so uh, Wave is a character uh, from the Philippines, um, which takes us nicely into our next topic, which is um, you touched on it a little bit already, but um, getting more diversity into your games um, I mean, Marvel has been doing this not only with games, of course, but with, with all of its media. Um, but in particular, uh, with you, you know, being focused on, on Asia yourself. Um, and uh, we have Wave. We also have uh, other characters such as um, the uh, Warriors of the Sky characters, which I believe you were involved with, and um, Kestrel and various other characters, you know, that are from here in Asia. Um, so how do you go about that? So some of these characters maybe are being you know, created specifically for a particular comic or a particular game, a particular property. Um, other characters are being pulled in, you know, that already existed in the Marvel Universe. Um, how do you, what's your kind of day-to-day, -day, you know, going about bringing those characters into a new era of Marvel games? Yeah, so it's all about timing and uh, uh, developer availability. Um, you know, we, I think we really hit our strike when we first started uh, creating uh, our Marvel first K-pop uh, superhero Luna Snow with uh, her Net Marvel, and when we when we created that, uh, it, it seemed like it's very well received. Uh, you know, it's the first uh, you know South Korean representation uh, properly uh, come from the game side, and then and if, if you look at Luna, and uh, she transitioned from the game into the comics called Agents of Atlas, um, which is uh, written by Greg Pak, and in Agent of Atlas. Uh, 
Korea was uh, getting uh, invaded by, you know, hell, if you will. Um, you know, in the same comic as well, a wave debut uh, from the Philippines. So this is like a global event. And, you know, and we know that wave is going to come out in that issue. And we thought, hey, they are a team, you know, a team of like Asia superheroes coming together to, to save the, you know, uh, at the Asia corner of the world. We, we took Wave and debuted her in a Marvel Feature Fight as well. And it was very, very well received. And so we know that, you know, uh, Marvel fans in Asia um, really like content that represent themselves as well. So, so I am, you know, daily, every day talking to developers and find ways to introduce all these characters into different games, you know, so that everyone can get a taste of uh, what diversity means uh, to them. And, and, you know, in celebration of Asian Heritage Month uh, this month, uh, you know, um, uh, it is also important to highlight, you know, uh, creators from uh, the Asian community, especially, uh, you know, studios that, that is, uh, you know, as good as the Western development uh, strength as well in terms of uh, presentation, uh, you know, graphic presentation, technology execution and, and all that good stuff. How do you guys go about making sure that those characters remain authentic? And, um, you know, it's not just a sort of a Western take on what Asian characters might look like, but actually, you know, making sure that they, they ring true. Yeah, so like when we created the, the Luna Snow, Crescent and Ayo, um, we work with locals, uh, you know, in, in Korea, they're, 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 they're from there. And we, we do research, you know, into some lore and, and uh, local culture. You know, we also have the Disney organization uh, in Asia that have, uh, you know, people that can help us, uh, give us their opinions and feedback about what resonates and what doesn't resonate or, or what is taboo. It's like, hey, you shouldn't do that. Uh, this is considered bad in Asia, that, that kind of stuff. So we are very, very careful about that. We just, um, so far, all the Asian characters are being done, you know, um, with uh, Asian creators. And of course, we recently have Castro. Um, um, she's also um, Malaysian born as well, um, but she's like uh, a scientist working with NASA. And so she moved to the US. And so I kind of related to that as well as born in Malaysia and kind of immigrate to uh, the, the US as well. So that kind of authentic story um, that we want to tell as well as presenting characters, representation from Asia. Mm, yeah, I think that's an important distinction as well, because um, obviously, you know, in the, in, in the modern world, people do move around. I mean, I'm from England, I live in Japan and, and um, you know, you're from Malaysia, you're living in the States, right? And, right. Um, you know, people do move around in that way. And especially, you know, there are Asian communities all around the world. And so seeing that kind of, you know, it's not just uh, a Malaysian character who's in Malaysia and, and, or, or, or that kind of thing, but to see a Malaysian character, who, yeah, maybe she grew up in the States, maybe she's been there for a while, um, which gives you an, another kind of um, sort of uh, slightly sort of a, a variation on what that identity means. Um, it's, it's nice to see that reflected in Marvel's uh, media. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was interesting too, because, uh, you know, superhero transcends, you know, uh, countries, if you will, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's a it, it's a global phenomenon. It's like you know, there's a hero in everybody, right? No matter where you are, and you know, we put the human in in superhero, right? So mm -hmm. the human elements we still need to retain, no matter what. Okay, and uh, another uh, sort of on a similar kind of theme, another character I'd like to touch on is Kamala Khan, Miss um, Marvel. Um, she was a character that you know was. Uh, sort of re repurposed in the comics more recently um, as um, uh, a Muslim character who grew up in, in the States uh, from Pakistani uh, descent. And, um, you know, she hadn't yet been introduced on the screen yet. She hadn't been in the movie. She had, there is a TV show coming up, I believe, uh, in the near future on, on uh, uh, Disney Plus, but we haven't actually seen her that much in action outside of the comics. But there she was in in the Avengers game as the the main character in the in the solo campaign of that game, which I thought was a, a great choice for several reasons. One, because she's a really interesting character, and um, you know, personally, as someone who grew up in in London, which is quite a diverse city, she reminded me of a lot of people I know, and and I, I actually felt um, uh, 
quite a strong connection in that way. But also because, um, you know, because she's a character who's kind of a fangirl of the Avengers, it's a good way to get you into an Avengers game storyline. But also she hasn't really been on screen yet. And so having a, ga a game like the Avengers, uh, the uh, Square Enix's Avengers uh, by Crystal Dynamics, which is obviously very sort of cutscene heavy. There's a lot of movies um, within the game that gives you a sort of cinematic storytelling but they don't have to worry about repeating what's been shown in the movies because she hasn't been on screen yet. So I thought it was a really, really inspired choice to lead that game. Um, can you talk a little bit about how, how that came together? Yeah, it was uh, discussed at length, uh, you know, Kamala's presence in a single player campaign. It, it, it's very, very intentional. Um, from the very beginning, she is a focal point. Um, since the annou announcement trailer, if you remember back then, that's just, uh, 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 I think, I believe it was just a shield and then this is uh, Mjolnir, and mm -hmm. it was just Kamala's voice, but you, if you remember yeah, her voice. That's over. right, that's right. And yeah. everyone was like, who, who, who is that girl, right? <laughs> you know, her role as a lead uh, POV character, right? It, it served really well as a narrative, you know, created by the team at uh, Crystal Dynamics, mm -hmm. uh, you know, of course, in collaboration with us uh, as well. Um, you know, she is the ultimate Avenger fangirl, and, and mm. because of her uh, fanaticism, served her well in her journey uh, to help her reconcile or even reassemble the Avengers team. Like, she is like the perfect cast. And, you know, Kamala is just like us. She embodies the spirit, like all of us, like, you know, every Marvel fan who just wants to, you know, get the band back together. Mm. Like, you know, her powers also is interesting because, you know, of her stretch. She's able to stretch, she's able to grow big. You know, like she's very stretchy, and it allows, you know, very dynamic gameplay. Mm -hmm. So, so she was natural choice for a character that player would spend a lot of time playing as, you know. Mm -hmm. And also, it helps that you know Sandra Sard, you know, did a very good job in portraying both like the teenager Kamala and also you know the uh, the preteen Kamala as well. Mm -hmm. Um, what else? What else have we got to look out for this year coming from Marvel Games? So, of course, we have um, Marvel Future Revolution. It's going to launch globally. We haven't announced the date yet. It's still hush hush, but it will come. <laughs> you can, you can <laughs> tell us. Why don't you just? I can now? guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> and then also we have Marvel Super War launching in China as well, and we haven't mm -hmm. told anyone about the release date. Um, right now, it's it's undergoing uh, closed beta tests. That has been going well, and please look forward to that in China. And of course, as you mentioned, the big Wakanda content uh, coming to Marvel's Avengers uh, soon. And, you know, we do have some tricks up out our sleeve. Uh, please watch out for them at E3 because there are a lot of stuff that we have not revealed yet. Again, you, you're welcome to tell us all about it right now. <laughs> <laughs> we are the house of secrets. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. um, how, I suppose since we have just a couple minutes left, how do you keep all this stuff secret? I mean, there, there's obviously, you know, I mean, you know, you're a professional person is the answer, I'm sure. But um, when you've got all of this stuff and it's so exciting, um, and I'm sure you get bombarded with questions from all around all, all the time, is it hard to sometimes just say, oh, I can't talk about that yet? You know, how do you keep that stuff to yourself? <laughs> yeah, the natural instinct is to like, I want to tell you everything that's happened at, at all times. Uh, now, um, you know, having worked in the industry for so long, like over 17 years, 18 years now, um, you know, you, you kind of get a sense, it's like, hey, you know, when you have the right time to tell uh, fans, it will be a pleasant surprise for them and emotional surprise for them. Mm -hmm. If we are about to leak some stuff, it will ruin the surprise and they're no longer excited. And we want this to be, uh, you know, as exciting as possible and we'll want to keep the pacing throughout the year and not announcing like everything all at once at one go um you know marvel ip is popular uh you know around the world you know we have the comics we have the movies we have the tv shows we have the games and there's so much activity going on the entire <laughs> year yeah. um, you know, there are a bunch of rumors that's flowing around and we don't address rumors at all um, and i feel like you know having us keeping this secret until the right time is, is always the best uh, way to go. And, and, you know, it's a shock and awe tactics. Like, wow, I can't <laughs> believe you did this, right? 
Excellent. Yeah, very. That's a very good, uh, very good diplomatic answer. <laughs> um, so, uh, Danny, I think we're out of time. Um, thank you so much uh, for this chat today. I really enjoyed it. I wish we could uh, chat for much longer. I think there's going to be a oh, Q and A, a live Q and A after this. Um, so we get to chat a little bit more. Uh, All right. Let's let's go chat time. with the audience. Exactly. But uh, for everyone who's watched up until now. Um, Danny Koop, Director of Production at Marvel Games. Uh, I'm Daniel Robson at IGN Japan. Thanks for joining us at uh, Gamescom Asia's Games Market Bootcamp Malaysia for this Marvel Games fireside chat. And we're waiting for your questions. Let's go. Let's go.